What's going on, crazy world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Black Sheep Perspective. Today, I got a very close friend of mine who uh, we have a, a, a very unique history of how we met and how, how the bond was created. He's a three-time, uh, sorry, three-time. He's a, he's a third-degree black belt in jiu-jitsu. He was one of my favorite jiu-jitsu coaches, one of my favorite you know, training partners. Um, our, our friendship grew through employment at the UFC gym. Yes, sir. And uh, we, we kept contact in so many different ways. I can't wait to tell the story. We've been trying to kick it and catch up for so long, but you've been a very busy man, and we'll, we'll tell everybody about that. But everybody, please welcome my brother, Mike Cohn. You guys might say it is May Cohn. It's a very American way, but <laughs> it's Mike Cohn. And uh, I appreciate you coming over here, brother. Is is this is long overdue, man? It's long my overdue. Pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Of it's course, man. Of course. Uh, you've been gone for a minute. You know, we've been trying to get together, have a few beers, catch up. <laughs> you know, life took you in many different directions. We started at the UFC gym. Yes, sir. And uh, again, you're a third degree black belt. You were you were the highest black belt I've ever met, especially after Daniel Valverde. I'm not sure if you know him, but uh, even I don't even know if he's a third degree. Um, you were such a great dude, bro. Me and you, you know, we, we got put in these positions where we were supposed to be team leaders and, and yeah. all that stuff. And it was when the UFC was first opening up. The UFC gym, by the way, I don't want to confuse anybody. Yeah. And uh, we bonded off of that, you know, because we, we were put in these positions where we became these team leaders, these little, like, captains. And, and you know, we had this yeah. bond. We had this energy that we shared. And we got, you know, we got to know each other very well. Um, in due time, I was going to fight. I had a fight yeah, coming. Yeah. I remember I yeah, wanted I, I wanted to fight, that. and you were going to be in my corner. Yes, sir. And I was so proud of you being in my corner. And uh, and then out of nowhere, you fucking you, had, <laughs> I you left. You, yeah, <laughs> just at the very last minute, it was uh, you got surprised with. I think that was the family issue part, right? Yeah, that was something impersonal that happened, and you had to leave, and uh, you know, and I still fought, and I lost. Fuck y'all. <laughs> but um, then you started coming back and forth. You know that there was a lot going on. Eventually, I, I know we'll circle back to this. You, you became a private security. If, yes, could, should, I, should I call it that? Private security? Is that yeah. What it, yeah. yeah. Personal security. Personal security for, for Dwight Howard, who's who's used to be one of my favorite players. He was after my favorite player of all time, which is Shaquille O'Neal. And Dwight uh, went to Orlando first, so he was a memory of Shaquille O'Neal because he was a badass. But you, you became a personal security him. And, you know, it, it was a better opportunity than what we were doing at the UFC yeah. gym. And you were just so busy traveling. We didn't get to catch up, dude. We, you know, yeah, it, we yeah. just messages here and there, this and that, what's going on with life. Um, we're trying to make it happen. And, and now we're here, dude. Let, let, let's cheers to that, brother, because yes, I'm so so happy that you're cheers. finally here. And, <laughs> and we're on our uh, first beer. <laughs> Macon said, I like to try different beers. Yeah, I text him. I said, "Brother, what beer do you want? Tell me what you want, and that's what I'll have." <laughs> he said, "No, I like to try." It. I said, "But I'm an IPA guy, and IPA is very foreign. It's, a lot of people don't like IPAs. Uh, they're, they're they're tough, you know. They're hoppy. They they have a strong taste, and they're high alcohol percentage." <laughs> and you, you stepped up to the plate. You said, "Hey, man, I'll do it. Let's do it." So Let's here we are, it. three IPAs in, just three, just a, just yeah, a nice minor three. three. <laughs> um, Mike, I was telling you that. Because I was kind of in, in small preparation for, for the podcast, it was something that took me into uh, everything about Brazil. You know, I felt like I knew a little bit about Brazil, but not enough. And since we were going to do the podcast, I said, man, you know, I want to I surprise Mike with some fucking questions about his country to see, you know, how much he knows. But let me make sure I do some studying first. So mm -hmm. I started doing some studying here I am just getting mind blown about Brazil. Like, I, there's just so many things I didn't know about Brazil. It's, it's, for one, it's fucking ginormous. And I don't know, you know, people out there, a lot of us forget about our geography and what we were taught, you know, who, the capital of this and what country that, you know, you, you kind of, if you don't go into that career, you forget about it. Yeah. And I didn't realize how big it was. I didn't realize uh, how much Amazonian forest it had in it. I didn't realize, you know, we were talking about it earlier, Mm -hmm. uh, how many coastlines it has. It has the most coastlines, the most beaches, the most coastlines. And it connects to 10 countries out of the 12 that is are in oh, South yeah. America, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just a lot of phenomenal things going on in Brazil. Bring us a little bit back to your upbringing in Brazil. You were born and raised in Brazil. Yes. You didn't leave Brazil except for a visit or two to a city in Colombia, right? No, Venezuela. 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 
It was all Brazil. All Brazil. Up until 2012 when you came to the States. We'll come back to that. Yeah. How was that upbringing in Brazil? What was what, what was that like? Because it's such a huge country. There's so many different things. Uh, as Americans, the, the most that we hear about Brazil is, you know, your Rio de Janeiro, your, 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 your Sao Paulo, um, you know, the, the, the famous um, parade, not parades, oh my God. Um, what do you call it? Carnivals. The, carna- carnival, the carnivals, carnival. you know, the famous carnivals, February. soccer, you yeah. know, we, we only know so much Samba, over yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bunda. <laughs> what was that upbringing like for you? Where, 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 what city was that? Where were you born and all that I stuff? I born in Niterói. Niterói is a, uh, there was a bridge that's a uh, separate, the bridge like that, separating the Rio, uh, the, the downtown Rio to Niterói. That was a bridge. So, the Bahia de Guanabara. That's uh, what they call the, the water between uh, downtown Rio and Niterói, where born. And Portuguese is you guys' native language. Portuguese? Portuguese. Portuguese. That's how you say Portuguese. it? Portuguese. Portuguese. Yeah, in Rio, we kind of exchange the S to X. So that's the only city, only state. That's that how you guys, so you pronounce the S as an X? Yeah, Portuguese. You know, that sh- at the end, you know, it's very common from people from Rio. But any other state, they say Portuguese, you know, with the S. We know that Brazil is famous for jiu-jitsu. Yep. Famous, famous, famous for jiu-jitsu. Um, it's probably considered the country, the mecca of MMA. Yeah. Um, especially because of the Gracies and, and yep. a lot of what they did. You grew up in this Brazilian world. Yeah. You did jiu-jitsu at an early age. Mm-hmm. What, did, what kind of impact did that have on you in your life? Yeah, it's kind of like I didn't even have a choice. To <laughs> you know, my dad's a black belt. My mother's a purple belt. And uh, my uncle, I have like three or four uncles black belt. And my grandfather was the one to be a black belt under Master Elio Gracie. So, and he was helping wow. uh, Master Elio Gracie to develop the, the, the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in Rio and the world, literally. And um, yeah, so there was a lot of like Bahadas Jiu Jitsu student was like indoor fight, you know, at the gym, choose some team ch- uh, gym, and bring the student to Eddie Grace's gym, and they 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 just put the, the the student to fight each other. So there was a one student that my my grandfather had that wasn't one of the best, Cicero. So we call him. I, I call him my my uncle too. Uh, he was my dad's coach. And there was one, I forgot the name, that one of the Gracies was uh, Master Elio's son. Uh, back in the days, he was the best one. And they 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 passed away. They died doing a uh, pa- pair of shoes. Oh, yeah. man, really? Yeah. So, like a freak accident like that? Yeah. Dad, yeah he was wild. young and that happened. But those two, Cicero and that that Gracie, uh, I forgot his, his first name, but they used to fight and they you know very competitive you know so every time like they have like some fights and stuff my steady grace used to say hey you know bring that that guy you know that was cicero and my grandfather used to bring him and they fight indoor you know so i still have a connection with some uh of my my uh grandfather student he's now black and red belt old he always like even the podcast that i did in brazil I invite him to be part of it. And he was talking about that specific fight that he was there watching it, you know, and he gave like details of that fight. So that was a pretty, pretty nice. Is it, is it looked down upon in Brazil if you don't train in jujitsu? Like, is that like the most common thing that almost all, I'm going to say at least the young men, the young boys or like, what is, what is that? Like, what is that community like when it comes to jujitsu and it being attached to Brazilians in general? It is. It's kind of like a wrestler. Right. In in America. In America. Right. But, uh, it's a, I used to say like every corner, like every street, we have some Brazilian jujitsu academy. Uh, even in your house, I, I used to have a, a, um, a class, a gym in my house, just have a mat because my dad always have a mat in my house. And, uh, I was like five, six years old. He was already have some little, little space to train area, us, yeah. you know, little area. And eventually when we got older, he 
took away the living room and put all mats. <laughs> you know, so like, yeah, we don't have a living room in the house anymore. We're gonna have. A, that's a, that's a I'm, I'm telling you right now. That's a reason. <laughs> one of the one of the very many reasons that I didn't have a kid because. <laughs> the mother of my child is not gonna put up with that because that's what I'm gonna be doing too. Woman, we don't need a we don't need a fucking TV room. <laughs> we need a straight up matted jujitsu yes. room. Yes. <laughs> These kids are gonna be going at it early, baby. Let's do I it. No, and the, the 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 thing is uh, the the funny part is my mom was agree with it. Right, yeah, she's yeah, a, yeah, she's purple belt. She's right behind. Let's yeah. put it. So you, she was the one to because my mom was every tournament that we participated in. My mom was there. That's awesome. I support. And my dad couldn't because he always want to fight the referee. Wow. You know, like yeah, something going intense. on. Yeah, yeah. We said, oh, he want to fight the referee. So, you know what? You can't watch your uh, fighting anymore. So, just my mom. So, yeah, yeah, I need to be home. I can't watch you guys. So, he had to stay home because he couldn't handle himself. You know, that's crazy that you're saying that, right? Have you ever seen the videos of <laughs> parents like yes, like yes, football yes. parent these kids are five six seven years old yeah and it's either soccer football even baseball and these parents are going ape shit <laughs> on referees on umpires on each other they get into fights like it's yeah, it's, it's yeah. you know that's a competitive parent yeah, you know? my, my mom got into some fights you know? yeah oh shit <laughs> that's <was> embarrassing <laughs> or not i don't know it all depends you know who who, who passed the line first you yeah, know they did they did uh, but uh yeah so we always had the 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 mat on our house mm -hmm. so when we took away the living room and we put all mat uh we start teaching for free i was 17 years old blue belt but i always like to to teach you know so i saw like talk to friends and hey come on and just learning let let's train together and um yeah so we we had a world champion coming from the living room from my house really yeah that's awesome isn't that something yeah you know uh, uh you have mentioned several people who are in the ufc uh two people you never mentioned in the ufc other people have been in organizations yeah you know i think about brazil like this huge melting pot but then like what a coincidence that here you know you you've, you've been connected to rafael dos años you're you're yeah. you're you're you grew up almost living right down the street or right or a few houses away from um from Gilbert Burns, from Gilbert Burns yes. who, who I think is amazing. What a, what a great guy. Yeah, you know, and I think, wow, what a coincidence. These fuckers are right here in South Florida. Here yeah. you are. Like, how did that happen from Brazil, this huge country? And, and yet the coincidental part is you guys are all in this South Floridian. Yeah, you know? because, you know, Florida, New York, California, the, the majority of the, the higher level guys, they looking for gyms uh -huh. you know, like Boca Raton, American right. Top Team, Black Seniors back in the day. So uh, California. So th those guys from Rio who got like a higher level, uh, who had a, 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 um, a option or, or um, I can I say, or. Um, They're trying to go to the next level. Or next or, level. Yeah, yeah. They so, come to U.S. Right. They go to those places. Right. They're not gonna go to Central. Cali. Ha Cali has a lot of options. South yes. Florida is the melting pot yes. of different, uh, especially Brazilians, obviously, and then other places. And then who else? Uh, In New York. New York is such yeah. a big city, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. So uh, that's what that, that's and how I, and Rafael I, went to California. Yeah. Oh, and that's Gilbert, where he's at. That's right. That's and right. Gilbert, no, no, he he moved back to to Brazil now to Rio because he's uh, fighting under uh, Nova Neon. Nova Neon is in Rio. Okay. So the headquarters is in Rio. So he moved back to Rio. So he's uh, fighting for uh, Nova Leona. But he used to be in California. Did did schools have that like that weird, stupid like high school football team beef with each other? Like like would it be one somebody's gym versus the not versus because you know your gyms are gonna go against gyms, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. But was there that weird, like stupid beef? Like like Oh, oh, that's that's a uh, that's Billy from fucking whatever whatever jujitsu man. In the days, fuck yeah. them, man. Back fuck the Billy's jujitsu. <laughs> We're over here jujitsu. You know, you know. It, it was it like that, really? Yeah. Yes, yes. I heard about uh, like some friend of mine. Uh, he was telling about there was like two big gyms in that city. It wasn't in Rio. It was in a uh, Belo Horizonte. Mm. There was two big gyms there, and in one of the gym, those guys was doing like some uh, stupid things. And they start calling the other gym. Yeah, we from this gym. Right. But just to make the other gym look bad because of the action they're doing. 
you know like just They're teasing each other taunting each other yeah they, they start doing it they very competitive too right so uh yes back in the day it was like closing door fights you know oh bring your student you know right or you come with all student to another gym hey we're gonna challenge you no close right. door let's do those things that that's like a back in the days thing yeah yeah we, we 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 used to call that uh well there's different terminologies but it's just in-house in-house yeah, you know in-house, shit yeah, yeah. Um, smokers, uh, there's other nicknames, but yeah, that's how they would handle it. You know, but it's just funny how you have that, that weird beef, you know, yo, you from another yeah. gym? Who's your coach? You know, what's yeah. your style? You we know? call, we call, uh, if you leave one gym that you learn everything from and you go to another gym, there's a, some word, very strong. That was like Portuguese word. We call creonte. What's that? Like a traitor? Traitor. Like, that's what know, it means. Yeah. Like creonte, you literally turn your back to to your coach everything that he taught, <clears throat> taught you and you just go to another gym like a rival gym you know that creonchi palab- uh, 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 word, word yeah is very 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 strong so especially in jiu-jitsu community you know but <clears throat> is it looked down upon i mean if there's reasons that you have to go on into and learn from somebody else i can understand if nothing You've been here the whole time and you just, what do you think? You're going to get something better? That's an yeah. insult. But if I move, if I was training my whole life in Miami and you're my coach, but now I, I moved to fucking Utah yeah. and and now it, it's another coach. It's it's Smith, yeah. Smith, Smith, Smith Jiu-Jitsu. I'm going to continue on with Smith. That's a slap in the face? You, yeah, you think no, that's an no, insult? Those, those days is kind of like different now. Okay. You know, those days. But you weren't supposed to go, you weren't supposed to go along with that back yeah, in the days. Yeah, back in the days. Yeah. No. One coach and that's it. You would stop training jujitsu, but not go to another gym. (laughs) Yeah, back in the wow, like like that. Yeah. So those days is different, you know. Even me, I've been traveling the world. You know, back in the days, I wouldn't even train. I would work out and stuff, but nah, I'm not gonna train in another gym. But now those days, because jujitsu is very like popular in the world, you know, we don't have those kind of mentality anymore. Um, I, I, I literally go to other gyms and just try out just meet people make connections you know train have a good time and and leave i know i'm gonna leave if i have to move to another place and I, okay now you know i'm a bahada jujitsu you know but then i have to train under somebody you know and i have to choose uh, some gym i'm gonna choose that gym the way that they they they, they handle it you know the teaching right the mentality you know that that, that i agree with <clears throat> and i'm gonna join in you know, so, um, I, I think it's, I think, it's, I don't know. It's just, we all have people's egos kick in when it comes to somebody else yeah, bringing yeah. a, a Bahadas, you know, b- by the way, wh- why do you guys have two R's, but then you fucking pronounce it with like, it's a H. H. <laughs> Bahadas. Bahadas. Bahadas, but it's two R's. Shouldn't you be saying Barradas? No. It's Barradas is one R. One R. That's how you Bahadas. guys do it. Two R's, Bahadas. Your English has, has come such a long way. It was always good, but it's fucking great right now. And then you even yeah, picked up Spanish hard. even better, right? It's it's hard. You, it's so you, hard. you think your Spanish is better than your English? Uh, or like right almost now, even? Right now, I don't think so. Back then in, in UFC gym, when we worked together, I would say my Spanish was much better. But since that, I moved to a lot of different places. So <clears> I had to use English so much more. Uh, I guess my English became my second language. I was I always say a first language uh, Portuguese, second language uh, Spanish, and third language uh, English. So I guess right now my second language is uh, is English and third language. Uh, so you were you were over there. I think we said twenty six years, twenty seven. I forgot the math that we did before you finally came over here. Yeah, twenty five, twenty six. Okay, so you came with no English, absolutely no English, no Spanish. First city you went to was where? Miami. That's where you touched down, Miami. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Did you immediately start living here for several months or a year or whatever? Like, what was that very first experience like? Yeah, um, I was doing my law degree in Brazil. And, uh, you know, Christopher, the guy that you met, uh, you, you, you saw right. at the gym today, uh, he was the one to motivate me to to move to U.S. You know, it's, oh, you a black belt. How do you... You a fighter, so you, you you can you can grow here. He was motivating me, so he he want me to move before I finish my uh, law degree. Law degree, right? And I say no, no, I need to finish my degree. So as soon as I finish my degree, 
then I can move. And uh, I finished my degree in 2010 and I start, uh, you know, doing full-time MMA. And I got two fights, MMA fights, and uh, and I won two. And uh, I got my black belt in uh, 2011. And 2012, that was the, the time that I moved here. And he, f- he got a fight for me in Michigan. And, you know, when I was in Brazil, he say, oh, you know, it's, it's an easy fight. The guy just have one fight and he lost. I say, okay, well, good. I have two fights. So okay. No problem. So He's got an amateur record of like 12 and one. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> so got to like two weeks before my trip. He say, oh, Michael, I, I, I found out. Actually, the guy had two fights and two wins. It's 2-0. I say no problem. I have two two fights too, so no problem. So when I moved to to US, I flew I flew to US. Um, he figured out the guy was like six one. He say Michael, he's six one, and I say oh, like he's fighting every week. I, I, what's going on? And right, say, no, right. No. So a week before I go to Michigan, that's the fight uh, was going on. The event was in Michigan. And he found out because one of his students moved to West, uh, Michigan and he figured out who was the guy. And the guy was class A or something, wrestler. Yeah, or well, yeah, well, either 1A, 2A, Division A, whatever. Yeah, yeah. something about like his, Yeah, yeah. and then he was uh, 13 and 2 because, you know, those amateur. Right. And, uh, because I didn't know that. Yeah. I was from Brazil. Like, amateur is one thing. And professional, people start MMA as professional. We don't need to fight six times or right, five yeah, times. Yeah. Like some kind of rules that exactly. you know, each stage here they has some type of rules. But we don't have that in Brazil. It's like they go as a black belt, you can go straight to uh, professional. Uh, to professional. Right. So when we got here, so and I figured out that an amateur, they fight as a professional. MMA like four gloves, horses, yeah, yeah. No shin guard. Right. They can hit on the ground. They can elbow yeah. on the ground. Yeah, every they, state is different though. Every state is different. You know, like they have all the 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 the, the knowledge or the the experience as a professional fighter, you know, and versus me as a ma- amateur, and came here just you know, and I say okay, uh, I don't care. I've been trained three months looking for his picture. You know, like <laughs> looking at his picture, yeah, just getting yeah, motivated, getting ready, motivated for this guy. So I don't care. And the guy say, "Oh, I'm overweight. I'm 80 kilograms. I don't know in in in, in pounds, but he was 80 kilograms, and he was supposed to be 77. Kilo is what, like three pound, three two, three per one, two point two. two okay, two point two. So all right, yeah, we got to do the math here. So you say you were what? You were 80. I was what? I was 77. 77. So and you he won- was 80. Okay, so you're 154, 154 pounds. Yeah, I, I, we got to do the math for it. But 158 yeah. pounds. Oh, shit. Somebody's going to call me out on this on the fucking podcast. Yeah. Wait a minute. You, you said you were what? I was seven, 77 kilograms. Okay, so One 77 pound, times it by two and okay. then double it. Okay, you're going to do that. Go I'm going to do it right now. Let's do the math here. For, no, I said it right. 150, 150, 158. Okay. 77 kilograms. And then times it by the point times two. Times 2.2. You're like 160 something. 169. There you point go. Four. Okay. So I was 169.4. And he was uh, 80 kilograms. He was three kilograms more, right? Almost like six pounds, almost seven pounds more. And uh, he say, oh, I can't lose the weight to make uh, 77 kilograms. And though, can he just jump up to 80 kilograms? Right. I say, man, I eat some pizza and I'm ready for it. I don't care. And then... Um, he was too big and heavy for you. He was tall. I thought he was uh, shorter. shorter. But he was tall. And uh, what, by the way, the, 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 the time that weigh in, we in the hotel. So I came to weigh in and he didn't show up. And then they say, yeah, the, 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 the fight is canceled. So he, another day, the next day, I found some guy who was trained with him was telling us like, hey, he, um, he figured out that you're a black belt. So he didn't fight. He That's didn't want to find you. So yeah, I saw some fights of him, like, you know, on the ground and pound was like, not not big thing you know on stand up he wasn't good with the hand right. he was a wrestler he's yeah. really good on wrestler but I, he didn't have any jiu jitsu yeah you know i i was pretty sure that i could win that fight yeah. but if you're going to go against a black belt you you have got you know you're immediately second guessing things if you're not black belt level or or brown and you know how to ground and pound you know like a black belt is an intimidating thing it's like okay i i cannot 
I should not shoot in on him. I should not be taken down by him. It changes your yeah. game. So you know, if, if you're not yeah. overly confident, you, you we know. say we say we say like uh, uh, on the ground for the most of martial arts, on the ground is the end. For us, it's just the beginning, right? You know, but those days, everybody figured out that jujitsu is so much imp uh, so so important that you need to have at least like four, you know, four different um, skills, grappling. Stand up, Muay Thai, I guess, is the best. Like you can use uh, elbow, knees, right. kicks, you know, wrestling and conditioning. <laughs> right. Conditioning. Those, those are four pillars. You're those totally right about pillars. that. Yeah. You know, so if you miss one of that, you can go into a certain level, but you not go to the highest. Right. You're just trying to mix it up the best you can. Yeah. Mission PT Rehab and Recovery is your one-stop shop for all physical therapy and wellness needs. Our licensed physical therapists provide customized hands-on treatments for all sports injuries, accidents, workers' comp, and more. No doctor prescriptions required for the first 30 days. Mission PT has one-on-one -on -one personal training for sports-specific needs, as well as general weight loss and strengthening. We are conveniently located steps from Dayland Mall. Call today for your free 30-minute consult, 786-409-5589. That's 786-409-5589. Mission PT, perform at your best. All right, so your journey, your, your, obviously your journey from, from Brazil to the States, and then even after that, you you've come across almost more cities than I have. You've lived in a bunch of different cities. And what's crazy is that as a Brazilian who's never been outside of Brazil, you come here at the age of 25, 26. You don't know English for shit. No. And you land in Miami. Yes. Now, there's a lot of Brazilians, not so much in Miami, but more so like Broward County, like uh, Deerfield, yes, yes, whatever. Yes. But but a substantial amount in, in Miami as well. But regardless, here you are in Miami, which is a complete different culture shock to the rest of the nation. Yep. Not to Brazil, but Brazilians, but to the rest of the nation. But yet, you ended up getting a job, like I mentioned way earlier in the podcast, with uh, being a personal security for Dwight Howard. And you started traveling. Yes. So this is crazy because you're barely getting used to Americans. <laughs> you're barely getting used to Miamians, which is a whole nother breed. Uh, the Cubans in Miami, the Latinos in Miami, just everything's so different in Miami. And then boom, you get this this gig with, with Dwight and you start traveling. Now you're going to different cities and you're living there at least a month or so. Yeah. What's your take on that? How 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 is that culture shock to go from? First of all, what what, what cities have you been to, or in in states in the nation where you stayed, you know, substantial amount of time where you got to learn about those type of people? Yeah, it, it it's hard to say because I need to try to remember it. Okay, but uh, you know, Miami, uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, uh, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Uh, New York, Wisconsin, yeah, yeah, New York, um, uh, Washington D.C., New Jersey, uh, Massachusetts, uh, Pittsburgh, Jesus, <laughs> Indiana. Um, I forgot the the other name, but let's go to to the other side, uh, California, uh, Arizona. What else? That's a lot. That's uh, already a lot. That um, where's UFC going on every time? Uh, Vegas, Nevada, Vegas, Nevada, Nevada. Uh, Nebraska. So how was how did were you noticing the differences? The differences? Yes. Immediately per city, like was it that obvious to you? Like the same way you've been in Miami long enough. Now you know the difference between a Cuban, a Puerto Rican, a Dominican. Uh, Nicaraguan, uh, yeah. uh, Venezuelan, and we're all here. And the minute they start talking heavy Spanish, you're like, oh. <laughs> you know, by now you know. Yeah. How was that picking that up from different Americans? And we're talking about Americans as a, you know some country white folks, some Latinos in a, in a country as states, uh, some some blacks who are raised Southern, might have came from the hood, but they're they're in North Carolina. You know, like you're seeing a multitude of. Yeah. accents and 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 pres you know the way people are pronouncing things yeah how was that like what, it, what? it was it was um for me as a brazilian black belt and fighter cauliflower ears 
I would say that they all treat me really well. Really? Okay, that's I, awesome. I, I felt welcome. That's Every awesome. Every place that I went, I felt welcome, you know, because uh, I don't really know much about the culture and stuff, but what I felt was like the people would see me from Brazil, black belt, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, they all saw me like, oh shit, like I, I can learn. That motherfucker. I can learn something okay. from him or this right. guy. Like, oh, especially like they, they, they see the color flower, you say, oh man, this guy is a, is a, like you say, a bad motherfucker. Right. But uh, they, all that was very welcome. You know, they, they treat, treat me really well. So I felt, I felt really well anywhere that I went. You know that discrimination stuff. Right. I never felt that here in U.S. I never felt that. But did you detect the difference in pronunciation in their yes. words? Oh yes, from yes. southern to, oh, to yeah. mountain talk to the city life. Because yes. you said New York. Yeah. You said Chicago. Yeah. You said um, Washington D.C. That's Nebraska. all up there. That's all up there. Yeah. You know, and it's all up in that in that uh, nor- uh but don't um yeah northeast type coast. Mm-hmm. So they're similar. But then, if you can really detect it, you'll yes, detect the difference. I, I could, I could, I could, and uh, I had to to learn the English. I felt that I was learning English in the different ways. Yes, of course you, you were. So, of course, uh, especially yeah. I, I had a student, Mike Lee. He's uh, he's um, he's a singer too. He's a my black belt, and he's a gospel singer, and uh, he owns a gym in Indiana, Fort Wayne. So um, uh, he calls me. He send a large message you know voice message and all that so i always uh, pretty much i need to catch it you know the way they talk <laughs> right and uh you know and and i feel that the way that i feel uh i copy the way that people talk to me right you know if you talk to me in some type of way yeah. i'm gonna talk to you the same way you know and then in, in another the, uh, situation i i feel like that that um I'm going to have you saying fuck this and fuck that in no time. Yeah, you, yeah, you start <laughs> saying that. I'm going to say that too. <laughs> but, uh, you know, like I, I, I copy. I copy <clears throat> and, and, and I engage right. in the way because I've been so many places and, and, and heard different ways speaking, speaking the same language but in different ways. Right, so right. I kind of like a learn and, and catching, you know. So I kind of like uh, I feel, feel comfortable, like talk to anybody. You know, I I could have sworn I just heard, man, I hope somebody listening can go verify this and call me out in the comments if you want to. I could have sworn that I just heard that Australians got their their accent, that Aussie English, because that's English. Yeah. That's English. Yeah, yeah. But that's English that derived from being drunk. (laughs) (laughs) I heard that's what I heard, that's bro. All English, no. And by the way, I love Australians <laughs> and I have not been to Australia. I cannot wait to go there. I think Australians are awesome, I especially when I, especially when I think about um yeah. um Volkanovski and then all these people over there, plus the country, the Great Barrier Reef, all that. Yeah. I'm into all that shit. But <laughs> I did hear uh-huh. that Australians got their their version of English from talking it while being drunk. <laughs> and it got passed down from English, English, like you know, uh, London people and all. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's just crazy how countries are so different about each other and how they say stuff. You know, like like the French hate us, yeah, and they're, and they're, they're just, apparently they're supposed to be rude and you know things of that nature. Well, it o- it also carries on within states, within cities. It's just mm-hmm. from one city to the next. It's just yeah, yeah. it's different. If you go to Kendall right here in Miami, yeah. Kendall speaks a certain way. I don't ask me to fucking imitate it. I do not know how to imitate it, but whatever. They speak a certain way. Mm-hmm. If you go down to Palmetto Bay or, or a little bit further south, you know, somewhere in Eureka, somewhere towards Ghoul, somewhere not even Homestead, but closer towards Homestead, mm-hmm. they speak different. If you go to somewhere in Wynwood, they speak different. It's 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 crazy how that sticks, you know. It, yeah. it, but but it is it is authentic. I can see why you said that you're gonna talk. And, and you're learning English in, in many different wrong ways yeah. <laughs> based upon, you know, who's influencing, you know, who, who's yeah. that best friend, who's that person that you're close to, you know? Yeah. And then I had a, a student, a private class, uh-huh. like a private student. He's from uh, UK. So when I moved to US in 2012, he moved in the same year. And he started like, uh, uh, you know, getting some private class with me back when I was teaching American Top Team. Okay. In Doral. So my my friend, good friend Chris, uh, he was the one to own American Top Team with uh, Thiago Silva. 
So he brought me to US and then as soon as he went to um Emirates, Dubai. Dubai, yeah. I was the one to take over the the, the gym. The, school, the gym, the you know, teaching the, yeah. the jujitsu part. And he was that that Andy Andy Withers, you know. Oh was, yeah, Andy, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, Ball headed Andy. Yeah. Yes, yes. He's so awesome. Yeah, he it, speaks. He's from uh, over there. He talks yes, like that. Yeah. So uh, he was. He want to learn some Portuguese. So when I was teaching him some jujitsu class, I was teaching more Portuguese than actually jujitsu moves. Right. You know? like, what, how about this? What's the name of this? Oh, testa, uh, queixo, nariz, uh, uh, braço. So he knew. Everything, uh, uh, all the parts of the the body, you know, in Portuguese, you know, and uh, we became a good friend. So he he's a brown belt now, you know. Yeah. He moved to Texas. Yeah, so that's right. Yeah, a good brown belt, and um, he's always posting pictures on his uh, bike. Oh and, yeah, and he, he travels a lot too. Yeah, he love it. Yeah, so uh, I'm very proud of him because he started jujitsu in a in a you know old age. Right. I would say like 50s. Yeah. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. And, uh, and, and he look became at him a now. brown belt. Yeah. He became a brown belt. And jiu-jitsu is an amazing thing, man. It really changes your life. Like, jiu-jitsu is, is it's hard to describe to people until they do it. Yeah. You know, you almost yeah. feel like, hey, you know, fuck, here we go. You know, this is what people say. It's so cliche. But it is. And and, it, and it's, if you do jiu-jitsu, it's not so much about the jiu-jitsu. Mm -hmm. It's the way you approach it. Yeah. The people you deal with. The things you're learning. The adversity you're facing. Being able to get tapped out. And be humble enough to come back. Yeah. Being humble enough to realize that a, a little small, tiny person can can be your worst nightmare. That's true. All these things. And then and then one of the biggest things is you have this this blood, sweat, and tears experience mm -hmm. with somebody on a daily basis. Because after you first of all, drilling is enough blood, sweat, and tears on its own. You're sweating, you're going hard, you're just drilling this move and this transition and this whatever. And then eventually, towards the end of the class, most classes you roll, you know, which yeah. roll, rolling means you know you get combative, you, you yeah. you're wrestling each other, you're you're being you're you're sparring in the jujitsu format, and when that's all said and done, you're fucking wasted, you're tired, you're exhausted, you're yeah. like what the fuck, yeah. and then you look at your partner or you look at all your training partners, you're like we're a bunch of animals. What's wrong with us? We could be home <laughs> drinking, eating, being slobs, being this, and we're here pushing each other yeah. at 25, at 40, at 50, Andy yeah. Withers, at whatever, and we're doing, and then boom, that bond grows. Yeah. And and you have this different perspective on life. You just, you're just more yeah. humbler. You're just more caring. You're just more, it just changes. It's just crazy called. because it, it really does happen. It's Jiu -jitsu real. It's a lifestyle. Exactly. That's what they call. Exactly. Because uh, no matter what age you are right now the weight or anything so you can train jiu-jitsu any any anywhere in your life you can train jiu-jitsu right so i had a student 57 years old where animal um uh, anibal anibal his Anibal's first name anibal i call him schumacher the driver okay you know because he was kind of slow let's go schumacher i kind of nickname him 57 years old with uh arthritis both knees and he asked me coach do you think that i can train jiu-jitsu i have arthritis and all that so yeah i'm overweight you can do it so he started training after one month we went to a tournament i brought some uh, some people some students to a tournament and he went just to watch it and he started watching saw me screaming and people doing well and all that and he said coach do you think that i can do this and i say of course you can do this 57 years old i said okay next tournament i'm gonna compete i'm a black belt i've been training for years i didn't believe in a hundred percent of him when he said that right i motivate him i say let's do it but i didn't know that he was putting himself a hundred percent on the mat right he was coming monday to saturday training every day he was doing five to six uh, uh, rounds each day, you know, he was getting exhausted. He was like, oh, coach, I'm dying. I say, let's go. Let's keep going. He kept going. So next tournament, a month later, he went to Orlando. So 57 years old, it's hard in jiu-jitsu to find somebody in your division. Right, you know? right, of course. So he had to go down to 40 years old. In order to get a competitive program. And the program. guy to 40 years old, taller stronger so the guy before the fight he came to to me you know and shake my hand oh you know shake my hand his hand was huge he hold, 
he was around all my hand. I said, yeah. oh, my God. He's going to tear, he's gonna tear this. Cito, <laughs> man, like 57 oh, years old. Yeah. Bro, that guy, Schumacher, <clears throat> just went there and gave his 100%. He got the single leg. He picked it up. He threw the guy to the back. He was winning the whole fight. By the end, like the last one minute, he gas out. And the guy flipped it. And he won by points. You know, but after that, he competed every tournament he was going there. And the oldest that he got was 40 years old. And wow. He, he beat 40 years old. He fought against 30 years old. He was doing, like, so, so, so good, you know. So, and another 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 case, uh, when we started UFC Gym mm -hmm. in Canada 2016, one guy, uh, Carlos Rivera. So, now he's a, a purple belt. Dark tan, tan dude. <clears throat> he had, like, a little... Um I remember he was with us for a minute. Yeah, he he was fifty something. Oh no, years old. I got the wrong guy. Okay, yeah, never yeah. Mind. He was fifty something years old, and we were doing like I don't know if you were there, but outside of the the gym because we couldn't use the facility yet, so we was outside, put the mats, and we did the grand open outside. Okay, why right? BJ Pan was there? Um, I remember all that. Yes, yes. So we put some mats. There was like four black belts. I was the head coach. And we showing some position, you know, a lot of people in the the parking lot. Yeah. And it uh, was big. It was huge. Yeah, it was that, was, that was nice. That was nice. A lot yeah. of balloons and stuff. Yeah. And uh and Carlos <clears throat> came to me and said, Hey coach, you know, so I, I marry as a Brazilian woman, you know, I know you're Brazilian, but it started like talking kind of like Portuguese, Spanish. And uh and he told me like, Hey, I have a like a back problem, so but I, I wanna train, but do you think I'm still able to do it? And I said, Of course you can and I gave the the Annabelle um uh, example, I said, oh, yeah, I had a student 57 years old. He did start at 57. So I started like, giving him motivation. Right. Said, oh, okay, I'm going to do it. So he signed up mm -hmm. the same day. He bought a gi and he started coming. He started coming to my classes and stuff. So he started learning and pushing. He's still paying. He was overweight. He started like losing weight. He started getting better and better and better. So he became a world champion. Wow. A world champion. He was He's Pan American champion. He became a world champion. Now he's a brown, be uh, purple belt. You know he made history at UFC gym. And I say wow, and he's still training. And I train with him every day in the morning since that I got back. Is he still he trying to like, compete? Is he still doing? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yes. Wow. He say I'm gonna compete as a black belt master seven because he's a, he's gonna be next year master seven. And in jiu-jitsu world, uh, uh, as a competitive, Master 7 is the, is the highest. Like, right. There was no, no people, like, no division on top of it. So he's going to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a black belt, Master 7 world champion. So that's his goal. And he's still training hard for it. And he trained with the young people. That's the, the beauty of jiu-jitsu. You know, like, w when you say, like, oh, uh, you know, even if you older you still in jiu-jitsu can use the jiu-jitsu technique to hold somebody young. I'm 38, right? I can train with a black belt or somebody young, like 20, 22, and I can do moves in jiu-jitsu that I can hold him. I can breathe. I can, I, I, I'm not going to let him move. Right. You know, I, I don't need to... Go try to, to be sink. stronger, try to be faster because he's younger. Yes. You know yes. that. But you know, you, you know way more... To at least sustain them, keep them. Yes, it's, it, we can't do that in boxing, for example. Right, right. right. You know, it, it's, it's only hands, elbow kicks, yeah. and stuff. So it's hard to to follow the 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 the, the speed. But in jujitsu, especially the gi, you pass one lapel, you can hold him. You you know, use the weight, use the the you know, like uh, you, you sprint, like boom, 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 and and, and you hold it. You right. Know? So that that's. Y y that's how we can like even like yeah. older people can train with the younger people, you know. Yeah, there's so there's there's so many things, great things that come from training jujitsu, and um, you know, like you have you you really have if 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 you're in tune with the the celebrity world and whatever, you got the Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy's a fucking star actor. That guy's a millionaire. That guy that guy's only I think he's only like 40, 30 something, whatever, and he got so engulfed with jujitsu. He's focused on that than doing a movie right now. Mm -hmm. And he's competing. I think he's a brown belt or purple belt. I'm not sure. But he keeps winning. 
Ed O'Neill. Ed O'Neill is, I don't know if you know who that is. That's um, from an old school TV show, Married with Children. Okay, Married with Children is a famous, famous TV show mm-hmm. that we've had here in, in, in America. And um, Ed O'Neill was, was Al Bundy. He was Al Bundy in the show. And, and basically, he's just the American dad who's, you know, uh, loves his wife, but is just tired of her. Can't, can, can't, can't even get up to have sex with her. Has a has a young daughter who's acting like a little fucking slut, and he's worried about what she's gonna do, but he's like, "Fuck it." And has a punk ass son who's like a pervert and this and that. It's just a wild ass <laughs> TV show about like your typical American family. It's funny as hell. It was the most popular shit. Anyhow, Ed O'Neill is I think eighty right now, probably like 84, 85. He just got his black belt, oh, like wow. like three four years ago, at, in somewhere in the eighty range. Mm. You know, you got these celebrities who are doing jujitsu when 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 they don't have to. The thing about jujitsu is you're putting yourself in uncomfortable situations. You're challenging yourself every day. You're getting humbled every day. There's just so much that comes from it. Yeah. And then you have the grimy stuff of like you two motherfuckers just sweating. <laughs> you're exchanging sweat. It sounds disgusting, but you are. You are. And you gotta deal with that. Yeah. And 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 you got to deal with uncomfortable, weird positions that, you know, if you think otherwise, it looks very sexual. But, it, <laughs> but it's not to us. But it's like, hey, he just yeah. he just put his nuts on my forehead. <laughs> and and if I don't move, I'm about to get choked out. You know, you're not thinking nuts yeah, in right. forehead. You're thinking I'm about to get choked out with a, with a north-south choke, you know. Yeah. So th- there's so many hidden secrets that come from jujitsu that just teaches you or influences you to just appreciate life so much more, appreciate yeah. people so much more, be more humble. And it's a great thing, man. I, I really wish people in, in as as a whole would get more into some martial art. Yeah. I just think jujitsu is one of the best. That's you know? that's uh jujitsu, I would say, you know, uh, right after you, you talk all that. So um for women who doesn't know jujitsu. Oh, yes. It's hard to see from the outside and see, okay, right. the thing on right. the head, the yeah. forehead, and all those weird positions. Positions, they they, yeah. they don't see they themselves. They look intimate. You know, they look weird. You yeah. know, that's why one of the programs that we did. We were the first ones, dude. Yes. Yeah, that was it's awesome, a, it's a dude. Self-defense for women. Yep. You know, you, you what covered a great the stand-up stand part, and I was over on the ground. Right. So with that, so we can show the value of not just the striking part, but on the ground, because jujitsu, <clears throat> even like you say, like somebody uh, uh, small c- with the jujitsu technique, you can uh, control and 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 you know take over somebody three, four, five times bigger, bigger than, than you. you. Yep, you yep. know, and that exactly. that's it, it's exactly what we need for women is a self defense. So if especially for the guys who want to bring the girls, the women f- to the ground, that's where. They're gonna start right. You're gonna be in that technique. position, yes. Exactly. You know, so and you can use the technique that you don't need enough uh, uh, strength to control somebody, to break somebody's arm, to put somebody to sleep, exactly. To uh, uh, have enough time to get away and run and right. get out of that situation. So we, what we did, you know, I sold the jujitsu uh, lifestyle, the vision, and all that. So that's how I started the the. Uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for women, and we start the class for women. So all those baby m- uh, mamas, you know, like uh, all type of women, uh, yeah, women yeah. that was enjoying Jiu Jitsu, you know, just for women, you know. So as long as they start like see that how Jiu Jitsu is, you know, like oh, it's not just about to somebody put the, uh, uh, each other on top of you know each other. So they start coming to a regular class and right. training with different. We start training with men. You start training with the other yeah. people. Yeah, we had we had, we had a very methodical approach to how we did that because we realized that we didn't want to mix women with men right away. Yes, and it'd be weirdly uncomfortable. It's yes. going to be uncomfortable already just them starting. You mm-hmm. don't want them starting with another man, and they, yes, they, they might yes. have boyfriends, they might have husbands, they might exactly. have. You didn't want, so we did the all women thing. Yeah, I mean, it was a fucking banger. It was awesome. Yeah. It was it was it was so fun for us, and we had a lot of women, and it went great. And then boom, we started the all women's jujitsu. You yes. started the yes. all women's jujitsu yes. class, yes. and then these there was like eight to ten women who were in the uh, self defense class. Yeah, started going Enjoying to your jujitsu class, and it just built from there. And brother, there's still at least three or four women that I keep in contact with from that mm-hmm. very beginning who 
to this day, they get into tears when they talk about, mm -hmm. like, I'm so glad you guys did that that day. Yes. You brought me into jujitsu, you know. Uh, there's and, several. I, and I had to leave because if I still yeah. in the UFC gym, we had a huge, huge Brazilian huge. jiu jitsu yeah. program for women. Mission PT Rehab and Recovery is your one stop shop for all physical therapy and wellness needs. Our licensed physical therapists provide customized hands on treatments for all sports injuries, accidents, workers' comp, and more. No doctor prescriptions required for the first 30 days. Mission PT has one on one personal training for sports specific needs as well as general weight loss and strengthening. We are conveniently located steps from Dayland Mall. Call today for your free 30 minute consult 786 409 5589. That's 786 409 5589. Mission PT, perform at your best. Yeah, so I mean, without a doubt, Jiu Jitsu changes lives and, and, it, and it, it plays such a huge role in so many different ways. We're talking about self defense for these women and. and, and the many people that we know, obviously you've been doing this so much longer than I am. I made you seem really old. I mean, jujitsu and, and self-defense, you've done way more than I have. You've also done more than that, though, with just self-defense. Self-defense, you've taken it to another level, and it's, and it's just as important. How do you feel about jujitsu as a requirement yeah. for law enforcement? Yes. At least... I can't speak for Brazil, but yeah. at least here in the states, what do you think about that topic? Because I've, I've, uh, you know, I've obviously been in the MMA world for a while. You got some guys who everybody believes it, but you got some guys who say it's not as applicable as you think it is. What's your take on that? Should should officers yeah. be required to have a certain level of jujitsu? And if so, what do you think that level or belt color is, and why? Yeah, for sure. In Brazil, is very common now. Uh, we have even like myself has a lot of friends who is a black belt, um, black belt, brown belt. They all train jujitsu. They train in the police department because, you know, to wear, uh, to having a gun on you, even as a self-defense or as an officer, mm. uh, working as a law enforcement, military, whatever, uh, it's a big, huge responsibility to grab that gun and pull it out you need to do it uh when you life is imminent danger right right it's easy uh, to do it in target practice it's easy to go to the gun range yes but when shit hits the fan and it's all crazy yes so and all depends on who you are if you don't have any martial arts skills especially jujitsu and you have gone gun on you and somebody like even small or big, whatever, whoever comes to you and you don't feel safe to use your 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 hand. Yeah, your own strength, your, your own, own yeah. strength. The first thing you're gonna do, I need to go back home to my family. So we're gonna put that gun out. So now you can be in a lot of trouble. Right? Because you might use that too early. You might use too that early. without having to have to use it. Exactly. Even if you're not using too early. Right. But when you go to the court or you, yes. you, yes. you show that situation right. to somebody like specialist or something, they're going <clears> to <throat> confront you and say, why you pull that? Yeah. Because Once you, you did that, it changed everything. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So when you have that, 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 that skills on you, the last thing you're going to think about is to put that gun out. Unless somebody with the gun, but if they come with the hand uh, hand fight, right. you know you have the confidence enough, you know have a striking or jujitsu uh, uh, skills, you can handle it that situation without of like hurt somebody or kill somebody, and you know handle it that situation. Right. You know, so in jujitsu in, in Brazil we had that a lot. So we had a lot of black belt in the law enforcement and police and all. But that. it wasn't. But it wasn't mandatory though. It's or not. A, it's, it's not. not mandatory. Is it now or no? It's not mandatory. So do you think? Not trying to cut that short, but do you think it should be, to an extent? Yes, you should. I, I agree. Yes. I agree. Yes. And what do you think should be the belt, or the level? Uh, they 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 could use like different ways to raise that level. Okay. Like okay, uh, law enforcement training one or two or three, like a law uh, a military. Okay. The military, we have like um, military. Um, I forgot the name, but that was like four levels. So if you're a white belt, you can only do traffic stops. If you're a white belt with a certain level of stripes or a blue belt, now you can be more into. But the problem is, even if you do. A traffic stop that can 
Yeah, go you're right. To that's, so, that's so true. As a as a black yeah. love, love, I try to I try to use that as a fucking stupid example, but that just backfired because you're no, totally it, right. Because no, because it's a, a traffic yeah. stop or some of the worst scenarios. <laughs> the minute you said it, I was like, "What the fuck was I thinking?" <laughs> Those are some of the worst scenarios. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, it's more about that that training facility. It's not right. even about okay. the belt. It's about how he can handle it. Okay. Some situation. Okay, in the traffic stop, so we can go to this side of the vehicle or you know we got to look this or whatever if that if it does this we got to do this 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 right. so uh it's more about the scenarios that we like we did as a self-defense we brought scenarios to the table and say hey does those are the the most common scenarios right. that's things that people can do that's how he, he can handle it that's exactly you what know? we did yeah so and then we brought to a, a law enforcement it's okay now is this 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 with the stoplight or uh, whatever so we can handle it that way that was those potentially situations that can happen so we can can handle it that situation that 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 way but uh uh, uh definitely jujitsu uh you know looking to a self-defense a way Every law enforcement should, should have. do it. Yes, should do it. Yeah. So I was. Uh, I started the, the program. thing. The thing. I apologize. To cut you off. The thing that they that they that they say and emphasize on though is, and I and I believe I'm I'm, I'm referring to Joe Rogan and when he was he was referring to Jocko, it can't be you just got to come in with this level of knowledge. It has to be you're consistently training in this yes, shit. For because sure. because it's the same thing when you're talking about the usage of a gun and you brought that up earlier. If I just go get my gun permit, my gun license, and I go to the shooting range, all right, I'm I'm a little decent. Yeah. But am I doing tactical tactical stuff? Mm -hmm. Am I doing, you know, real case scenarios? Am I going to you know, some some self defense class where somebody's trying to grab my gun in the middle of a traffic stop. You know, yeah. you you have to continuously put in the reputations, you, the repetition. Excuse me. You have to be consistent with it, and not just okay. Yeah, I, I did jujitsu for six months. Now I can become an officer, and that that's okay. it. No, you, no, it has to be continuous. It's not even about to be consistent but your body need to be in a place where it can handle it those type of move right and if you don't practice it it's not gonna if be if you ready. don't practice yeah. if you don't training right if you don't run if you don't lift you're not gonna be strong enough to execute some moves that we teaching you know if i teach some move brazilian jiu-jitsu to you and some guy that is like you know 300 pounds you know he can learn the move but how he can handle it how he can you know what i mean right like you're gonna be in shape working out being healthy yeah eating you know what i mean so yeah, you might know the moves and what to do but if you're not in good shape you're gonna get tired you, and you're not gonna be able to do it you period. can't handle it you, yeah. can't, you can't do it it's so another reason you gotta you gotta be you, know. you gotta be you gotta be uh uh i'm not gonna say athlete but you need to be uh, consistently yes. working out so that you know? you're active with it yeah, because if you sign it to be a law enforcement, that's a huge responsibility. Right. You know, for you, for the people, for, right. your, for your family. Right. For the people. We, the Communities street, that you're protecting, community. yeah. You know, it's not just a job that you're going to make money. Right. And, you know, and pay your bills. No. You, you're doing something much more than just a money-wise. And therefore, that's why you should do this. Okay, for instance, right? If you're going to be a doctor or you're a surgeon, yes. you're going to go through a shitload of school and you're going to learn all those ins, ins and outs about you know yeah. dissecting somebody because there's a, there's a huge level of importance behind anybody getting operated on. Mm -hmm. So to become a law enforcement officer, yeah, there's a huge level of importance behind it, especially yes. now with all the fucking bullshit that's been going on and yeah. people want to defund the police and all that. That's horrible. They got a tough time. Yeah, L let's fix things. Mm -hmm. And I'm not I'm not referring to any which any certain situation, but where cops make bad decisions and and use too much force, too much brute force, pull out the gun too quickly, uh, yeah. whatever it might be, this will definitely help. It will help yeah. immensely if we can make it a requirement. Yeah. By the way, that's one of the things that I, I I don't think I told you that, but I would I was thinking like still thinking i could be a law enforcement and not just execute my job well with the knowledge that i have as a martial but arts teacher and i can teach others too right that's one of the things that i really really want to do it and uh i was uh, a coach for uh special forces military 
uh, here in Miami since uh, from 2013 to 2019, teaching a uh, military guy, Navy SEALs, uh, right? You know, Marines. I remember you were balancing that. that out, right? Yeah. So they they all have uh, uh, um, uh, gun skills, and they have four levels of uh, military training or something that cover uh, jujitsu. You know, uh, stand up part, uh, knife, electric knife, and stuff like that right. I, did, I did two courses, you know, with them. So my blue belt was the one to handle it. The, the, the course level one, level two. Okay. You know, so um, even as a blue belt in jujitsu was enough level. Uh, his level was high enough, enough to high teach enough to teach them. Yeah. To teach and handle it. Right. The majority of the situation that, that they're talking about. Yeah. You know, so that at a blue belt level, as a blue exactly. Belt level, right. As a blue belt level, especially like purple, brown, and black. You know, we 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 could handle it. But but by the way, uh, somewhat of a sidestep, but still keeping the jujitsu. When you became um, the White Howard's personal security, did you ever teach him jujitsu? Did he ever want to do jujitsu, or he didn't care for it? Who him? Yeah, he did it. He did. He yeah. Did it. Yeah. <laughs> And it was, was it was it out of his own interest or was it like you yes. telling him? I mean, obviously he doesn't need to learn it because he's got fucking security, you know. But yes, that that was a, in my side was was hard to tell him. Hey, let's do this. Let's do, because I was there to provide a security, some 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 work for him. Right. And one of the thing that kind of like hold me to don't offer or, or push him to do something. It's because he was a he's a basketball player. Right. I don't want him to put himself in something that, that I was pushing. Yeah, and he could potentially injure hurt, himself. And, injure yeah, himself. Yeah. And now, you know the, the 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 job that he was doing, but playing basketball that you know that right. his money and, and his <clears throat> yeah because of something that you told him yeah because I, I told it you know that's why I never push it. So it's kind of like came from him. You and what, and what, did, do you remember when it came? Was it just curiosity? Was I it because I know he used to go to UFC fights. He loved it. Yeah, I know, I know, I remember. It. He always loved it, and um, he uh, he brought me to two or three UFC fight. That was like a dream come true. Really, dream come. I was like, you know, with him, I was going <clears> to, <throat> you know, uh. Uh, places where I was meeting famous people, I didn't even know who they were. Right. And even the, if I knew, I didn't care about it. Even him, he was fan of somebody. Do you know who it is? Right. I said, no, I never heard of. Him. Oh, he's blah blah blah. I said, oh, oh, that's nice. Oh, yeah. And I, I didn't. But when he brought me to a UFC fight. I felt like oh, there you Disney, there you knew Disneyland. Yeah. I was like, right. Oh my God! I saw Anderson Silva. I saw uh, George St Pierre. I have a picture of Anderson Silva, George St Pierre. Um, who else? Um, how far? How far did? How far did Anderson Silva grow up and do his thing from you? Because here you are. You were in a in a in let's just say a community yeah. where you you grew up with per se Gilbert Burns. You were connected to Rafael dos Anjos, and there's other yeah. people there. Where was Anderson Silver at? Like, how far was that yeah. from where you were at? I would say Rafael was here, where we at now. Mm -hmm. And me was in uh, where my place at, like 60 minutes away. Okay, that's how close you guys that's were. Okay. Far, right, even less. Right. Uh, Gilbert Burns, I would say I was here where you are right now, and he was in UFC gym. Okay. 10 minutes away. Right, okay. And the Silva was like Miami, Georgia. Oh, okay. You know, so he was in, in Curitiba. It's another state. Mm, okay. You know, so I would say like Georgia, Miami, Georgia. So that was a great surreal moment for you to to be able to meet him and, and, and yes. others back then. Uh, aside from meeting, you know, that obviously, and I'm sure there's there's a whole lot of other names if you remembered all that. What was some of the great highlights of the traveling aspect? Because you guys traveled a lot. That's why I didn't get to see you. That's why we didn't get to catch up. You know, you were always traveling. You know, we were talking to each other. Yeah. And you're like, dude, I'm here. Dude, I'm here. Dude, I'm like, damn, man, well, yeah. you're in town. Let's get a beer. Let's get a beer. Let's get a beer. What? We were never able to do it. Yeah. 
What 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 some of these what? countries that you really were fond of? Yeah. You're like this was dope. Yeah, do you want to talk like how what, do I get to uh to that position? Yeah, like, of course, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, how, how did you become Dwight Howard's personal uh, bodyguard or yeah. security? I had a, a one of my student, uh, one of the Navy SEAL, and um, he met Dwight Howard's trainer okay. back in the days in 2017, and his trainer, like personal trainer. He was, uh, they were looking for uh, security. So he spoke to my student. So I was in a wedding in Massachusetts on Saturday. I was at UFC gym. And uh, I was in that wedding on the weekend on Saturday. And uh, and my student just called me and said, hey, that, you know, that position uh, to be a bodyguard for Dwight Howard. I didn't even know who he was. <laughs> I never watched basketball. Hey, yeah, you came from Brazil at 25, 26. <laughs> I get it, dude. I get it. I do. I didn't know. You I were soccer and jiu-jitsu and MMA. All my focus was the salary. When yeah, they say the yeah. salary, I say, yes, yeah. I, I'm in. I'm I'll protect in. somebody for that money. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I don't care what they did. <laughs> do whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, yeah, he say, oh, you got to travel on Monday. I said, oh, my God. So on that Saturday, I have to call my... Um, um, jiu jitsu director, and I say, Hey, I'm sorry, you know, that thing. I, I, he was Brazilian too, so I explained everything to him. He he understood. I say, My right. bro, bro, you did an amazing job, so I'm, I'm, you know, I want you to do good. This is the corporate guy from UFC, yes, right? Yes, yeah, yes, I remember. He was, he was, and then, um, and and he support me. And I say, Hey, please, you know, just tell the, the fitness director, though. I call the fitness director too, but I should call the 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 guy who was responsible for uh you know jujitsu uh community. right 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 oh I did it and I called the fitness director too so I I didn't have a chance to say bye to you or right. say bye to my students and all that because I had to that's take it that. I had opportunity to. knocked right I there and you answered yeah I had to I right. had to and um so he got my flight. Monday morning to San Diego to meet somebody that I didn't even know his first name. He said, do I how now I can say do I how right. right. Before I would say D D white. Yeah, it was D white. <laughs> D D man. D how how you know what? I'm gonna say Mr. Howard. You you met him and you had to be like, God damn this motherfucker tall. That He's what, seven, seven foot, right? Uh, six eleven. Six eleven. That's what I say. Oh, so what is it? D uh, okay, uh, Mr. Howard, Mr. Howard. I was the whole trip, six yeah. hours, five, <laughs> six hours from Miami to San Diego. Uh, Mr. Howard, Mr. Howard, Mr. Howard. So when I got there, I was in touch with um, with his security, you know, uh, for for that area, uh -huh. you know, and he said, "Oh, we going we going to the to the hotel right now. So meet us in the, in the parking lot." So I was there in the parking lot, and uh, and I saw they coming in the car. And I opened the door for him. When I opened the door, when he stepped out, he didn't stop growing. <laughs> he was like, I said, oh, <laughs> the first thing that I told him. Well, at that moment, was that the tallest person you've ever seen in yes, your life? Yes. Right? It had to be. Yeah, yes. Of course. Yes, for <laughs> sure. Uh, what the fuck? When I look at him and say, are you sure you need a bodyguard? Right. <laughs> like, like you can fucking kung fu you, kick you anybody. Yeah. scare the, the, the people out of you, you know? And he, he started laughing, so... Plus, he's ripped, dude. Even though he's slim, he's ripped. He, he's big. Fucking yeah, dude. And uh, the funny thing is, like, even for him, because he's so used to people who knows him. Right. And a security, people asking for stuff, or all that. He, he was so uh, used to... Somebody who didn't know who the fuck he was. He yeah. me and say, mm, who, like... You don't know, you know him? Yeah, oh, this is, cool. is kind of weird and cool. Yeah, and and the thing is, like somebody told me was, he he liked to see he was looking at my Instagram and stuff. I was uh, doing security for for a cruise in uh, Olympics in Brazil. Okay. So when I was in Brazil, I stayed for twenty one days, and the crew the, the 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 ship next to us was the NBA ship. Like all the like Kevin Durant, uh, right. Carmelo Anthony, Green, all those guys were there. So every other day, you know, during the the Olympic season, they were coming to our uh, ship. So we were doing security for them, for the USA team. Okay. 
And um, Camilo Anthony's uh, bodyguard asked me to, oh, he was American, he's a milit military, and he was asking me to say, hey, you know, like, we, he want to go to a favela, he want to go to a, uh, Christ, you know. Brazil. You know, yeah. yeah. So can you, like, come to with us, you know, like, do a security for us? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'll do it. So I did. We went to the Christ. We went to a favela and all that. So one of the pictures somebody took, uh, Camilo was talked to, uh, you know, shaking hand with some kid. Right. And I was behind of it. So they, they, they sent me that picture. And I posted on Instagram. I didn't get paid for, for anything. I did it for free. Wow. I just, I just you know, want to join it. And that picture, you know, somebody told me that, you know, Mr. Howe was looking at my page and all that and saw that. So, you know, and he always liked uh, martial arts, uh, uh -huh. jiu-jitsu. He always a big fan of UFC and all. So when he saw all that history that I had. On, on he felt Instagram, comfortable with trying felt, to. Yeah, yeah, he felt comfortable to have me on, on his side. Right. You know, so I would say like the biggest payment for that day that I did the security was that picture. You know, that kind of like open door for me to, right. to meet uh, Dwight Howard. So that's a, it's a, it's a big. Now, how long did that, um, let's just call it journey. How long did that journey last? What was that, about seven years in total? It was. I, start, I started doing bodyguard for uh, 2017. And I left. Okay, not far. Yeah, I'm kind of like there. a month ago, a month ago. I know. I know that he's been in the headlines, and it's you know it's stupid, silly, dumb shit. Really, in my opinion, um, it, haters gonna hate. People are gonna talk. Uh, blackmailers are gonna blackmail, and all that you know riffraff. But Dwight Howard to me has been a pretty, pretty, pretty good, pretty good guy. He's he's you know <clears throat> you know a lot more than what I do, but. I don't want to get into the, the dirty business or the private business because I know you, you guys got a certain code. You yeah. don't want to break that code. And I know you respect and you have a friendship with, with Dwight Howard. Um, but how was that experience of being a personal bodyguard for somebody of that stature, not just stature, but just that popularity, that type of fame? Like that's, you know, that's, that's a culture shock to you yeah. it, it, in so many ways because I know that Dwight... He had a great career in the NBA, great career. And uh, after Orlando and Houston, that's when things started, you know, bouncing around different directions. And then um, I know that he did some, I think he played for, uh, what, what was, he played for the Asian team in yeah. somewhere in Asia? Taiwan. 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 <clears throat> he played for them. Yes. So that's when, that's when I kind of got a little bit caught up in, in other stuff and I didn't follow it well enough. But you obviously traveled with him. You did a whole lot of everything, you know, that, that had to do with your role. Without having to spill too many beans, because that's the last thing we want to do. You know, I feel like that man. You know, people have been trying to beat up on him, and I don't know that it's fair. You know, it's it's, it's kind of stupid. I'm not asking for that. How was the experience of all the traveling and all the you know the, the, the going to Taiwan and the different countries, and you see how they act when they see this fucking you know six foot eleven god of a person, and they're used to five foot five, you know, and then here you are, you know. In the back, in the middle, on the side, ready to go, you know, on any given yeah. notice. How was that experience, dude? I would say, like, half of my journey in U.S. Um, is with with him, with Dwight Howard. In 2017, that's when I met him. I didn't even know how to start his car. <laughs> that's how I didn't know who he was. Wow. Uh, when he asked me, as soon as I start working for him in San Diego, he asked me to do some like a private, you know, oh, can you set it up like uh, some um, training, like stand up training, whatever, something like that. And then uh, I didn't know he was that famous. So I call UFC gym in uh, San Diego and I call him and say, hey, you know, so my boss want to train some stand up. You know, you have some, uh, some guy, you know, <coughs> a Muay Thai, kind of tall because my boss is kind of tall. It's oh, what what's the name of your boss? I say, man, I don't know his first name, man. It's, it's, it's kind of hard to say, but <laughs> I, I call him Mr. Howard. They say, is that Dwight Howard? I say, yeah, yeah, this one, yeah, Dwight Howard. They say, oh man, Dwight Howard coming to the gym? I say, yes. I say, okay, I have somebody here. So I told him, hey, you know, there was somebody there to to hold the pads for you. So we went there. There was a guy really good, hold the pad for him. He works uh, two days with him. 
that's how I figured out that he was famous. That, yeah, that famous, yes, right. I didn't know. I didn't know he was that famous. And then uh, he went to Charlotte. So we went to Charlotte and then, um, you know, all the signs with his picture and all that. So then I say, oh, wow, yes. I'm doing secure for somebody. Did that. you have to, I don't know how this goes, bro, but is this only during the day? Is this when he makes a move? Are you? Do you have to live with him or you don't live with him? Or you only live with him when you travel? Like, how does that shit go for these uh, these people on that level? Yeah, live with, because he needed, he needed 24 7 yeah to, he needed somebody to be uh with him right for the whole time so i literally left miami and stay uh work with him and um yeah just just there doing security be available for him you know and um that's uh, the biggest experience that i had in my life you know and i can say that you know from the bottom of my heart if he wasn't the person that he is I couldn't handle it that much. I couldn't be working for him for even like a month if he wasn't the person that he is. I stayed with him for six, seven years because he was so nice to me. He was so um, respectful, you know, gentle. He was like, because people don't know him. People like know he's a as a player. Right. Or a, but bro, every day he wakes up with smile on the face, you know, like uh, it, treating people really nice. Right. But the the the, the hard part is is um, because he's famous, and people trying to do the shortcut, and trying to kind of like climbing on him, to, using him, yeah, using to to show themselves. Right. You know. So I'm literally, I would say, like the first one who stopped working for him because I have my, my things, you know, with the martial arts and stuff. I need to take care of my family. I was away for so long. I kind of like the first one to come out here and just talk exactly who he is, you know, uh, 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 every day, you know, because people just like trying to, to get that shortcut and get advantage of it, you know. So it's, uh, it's, it's hard. To be in the position that he is, you right? Know, not him, just like everybody who got famous, you know, everybody who got famous. It's 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 hard. Yeah, it's really I, I hard. and I, and I definitely want to ask you about that. Mission PT Rehab and Recovery is your one stop shop for all physical therapy and wellness needs. Our licensed physical therapists provide customized hands on treatments for all sports injuries, accidents, workers comp, and more. No doctor prescriptions required for the first thirty days. Mission PT has one-on-one -on -one personal training for sports-specific needs, as well as general weight loss and strengthening. We are conveniently located steps from Dayland Mall. Call today for your free 30-minute consult, 786-409-5589. That's 786-409-5589. Mission PT, perform at your best. You know, what, what, a, what a wild position to be in <clears throat> with the... the and and I I really don't care to go into the details because of the accusations, the lack of respect, the uh, the invasion of privacy. Just there's so many things that I I don't I don't want to do that. I'm not I'm not that dude. This podcast is not that that tight. But what a wild position to be in for you to have this roller coaster of a of a adventure with Dwight Howard of all people, this fucking Brazilian that just came with no English in his goddamn left pocket at the age of 26. A few years later, and here you are, Dwight Howard, which you didn't even know who he was. You're his personal bodyguard. Yeah. You have this, you know, amazing adventure, this life that turns in all different directions. You're traveling, you're going to places you never thought you would. You're realizing, oh, the fuck, this guy's a star. These people, Taiwan loves him, this, that, loves him, that, 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 that. Yeah. You, you you learn the, the, the code of uh, secrecy because you realize, you know, I'm with a celebrity and, and, and there's a code of silence. You know, you don't say this, you didn't see that, you this, this, that, blah, blah, blah. Fast forward now, though. And after this journey, the white's going through some hardships right now and people are accusing him. People are saying dumb shit about his personal life. Personal life. Not even anything crazy outside of that. And you're in this position of like, fuck, dude. Am I done with this train ride? Is it because of what happened? Is it because of where we've landed? Is it because I'm ready to go to my next stage in life? But this is what you got confronted with. 
this just happened, you know, a few months ago, not that long ago, where you said earlier that you're the first one to respectfully walk away. You told him you were ready to go to your next, you know, uh, journey and, and pursue this jujitsu and your own school and, and everything else, you know, that you're, you're getting into slowly but surely. But that experience, that 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 to sit back and, and you know, and hear people like, you're the first person, I follow sports, I watch ESPN, I do all that. And when I when I heard the, the the silly shit against you know Dwight, I'm like, oh man, this sucks when somebody goes through this. It sucks when when star players go through this. And there's always there's always people trying to pull a fast one on you, lie to you, steal from you, this and that. You told me a lot of things off camera that I don't need to repeat of of things that Dwight had to go through on a personal level with with throughout this journey. You know, be, when you're that rich and famous, everybody's trying to get a piece of your pie. And you're trying to trust the right people, and it's hard to trust the right people. It's hard to make the best decisions. You know, you have everything being thrown at you, the temptations, the this, the that. But yet, even after all that, you came to his defense, and you told me, man, Wes, I, n- I never saw no funny business. He's always been nothing but good to me. Yeah. You, even, you were even humble enough to say, bro, we were never like close friends, close friends. We were always respectfully super cool. Yeah. But we kept the business on a friendly level. You said that you've seen him have better relationships with other, uh, not just bodyguards, but other you know personnel, and it was just different. But your relationship has always been genuine, and it's been a long time coming. How do you feel about being in this position where you hear all this shit happening? You're seeing a, a friend of yours, yeah. a business partner of yours, a boss of yours. And you're trying to make that next decision in your life to benefit you. And, you you know, th- th- this is a weird, like, who, who, how many people go through this, you know? It's very rare. Yeah, it's uh, it's hard. It's hard to say because I've been watching a lot of stuff going on in Brazil that I follow a lot of stuff in Brazil. And uh, and I see how, how level the people got and how people trying to hit those people people who got like uh elevated right uh, you know and um and and i follow a lot that because you know my instagram you know heels and stuff a lot of stuff coming like that and i kind of like compare what i was uh leaving with uh mr howard you know and he was so nice with so many people like uh open open heart to so many people that uh it's kind of like it's it's hard for him in his position to tie trying to identify who who the real ones and who are not yeah Yeah. even though that i i'm not like uh i wasn't like those you know like imagine let's put it in a situation if i was a brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt uh you know famous and somebody come to work for for me as uh you know any other country right some Amer- then, some American white guy from yeah. from from Kansas and some Hispanic Cuban from Cuba your vibe is is all right. it's different is that, you, you great vibe with them this and that but now yes. if a Brazilian if if Chris if Chris came and he's Brazilian and has the same accolades it. that we, there's a different bond you're like oh shit you got it you're a Brazilian and then boom I get it but doesn't mean the trust. You know, even I was right. Brazilian, I didn't have that type of vibe, mm-hmm. you know, with him. He always say, I can trust a Micon. You know, even if I would see he had connection with other people talking different stuff that he never talked to me, but he didn't trust right. those people. Yeah. That you know was, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. But that feeling was like for me was like the the way that he trusts me or that he he still trusts me uh is the way that my family sees me mm. you know what i mean mm. because our family knows exactly who we are you know most of the time they know who we are and the way that i'm with my family that he they can trust me the fullest and see my boss <clears throat> trust me in kind of like the same way for me was 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 huge right you know because i know who i am and i know who my family think that i am 
you know, they, they know who I am. And I'll see somebody else from another country, my boss, somebody that I didn't even know seven years ago. And, you know, and trust me in the same way or same kind of way. Right. For me was like my job was done, you know, 100%. You know, because to be a bodyguard for, for somebody on that level, right. it's not just about to protect his body. It's protecting who is around him. Yeah. Protecting. Um, his privacy. You know, his privacy. Yeah. Protecting. Like, it's a, it's a lot of type of way, top, uh, type of way to, to protect somebody. You know, and uh, and I feel that I did I did my job really really good. You know, I did it right. We uh, when I left because you know I had to take care of my family. I have to to do my things that I do the the the, the best. You know, as a martial arts, so I need to go to that way. You know, like working for him was something that kind of like take me away from the right mats. right. You know, money was good, experience was good, travel, so on and so forth. But was was the best boss that I could ever have. You know, <laughs> so uh, but at the end of the day, I say, man, I I need to to do something. You know, I right. need to go back on the mat. You know, that's what I want. I want to compete again. Right. I wanna, I We're wanna, talking about that. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna compete next uh, in February. February. Yeah. February and March. That's my goal. I've been training for it. You know, so I feel like those things got me uh, alive, you know, like got me every day with that motivation right. to, okay, train you harder, do my diet, you know, train and, and, and go there and, and, and um, test myself, you know. And uh, if eventually I want to open my own gym, that's, that's my plan. Uh, I need to have, right. you know, as many time on the mat that I could. Right. You know, so, and with him, it's more like... So it was holding you back a little bit. It was. Yes, he's hold, holding me back a little yeah. bit. So, even though, like, we start training, I start training <clears throat> him, start training uh, his kids, you know, his cousin. But uh, it's still, like, a, a training, but not training myself, you know, and put myself right. in, a, in, a, in a position, a, a challenge position. You know, that's what I need because I want to be competitive first and then eventually open my own gym. Were you were you thrown off by all the accusations that were coming off? Did it catch you sideways? I mean, you've witnessed a lot. You you've you've heard things behind closed doors. When this came out, it's a surprise. That was a big surprise. I mean, you you told me in seven years you never saw a hint of any no, of that. I never. You. I mean that that's that's crazy because you know you got all these people saying otherwise, and it, and you also told me. I, I only want to say so much. You've witnessed a lot of people try to do him dirty. You've witnessed, you've witnessed, I don't want to call anything out, you've witnessed friends, families, managers. Uh, you've witnessed a lot of dirty business because it's, it's dirty when somebody's rich and, you know, people do dirty things. I would say uh, before would be shocked, but now it's kind of like a normal. Right. Like people who got like, uh, you know, the, the, you know, famous, you know, whatever they do, then people just thinks like they have the 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 right to to take from them right right you know i don't know why you know this guy trained three times a day you know work his ass off like every day train your heart surgery and all that and people just look whatever he accomplished but not the 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 you know the the um, the, the the hard work and yeah that he the put in yeah exactly put it in. right no, they're just he, seeing the rich and famous that's all they're seeing that, that's right. all they see you know yeah. i was there i was there when i was driving and he was on his knees on the car because he got a back pain Ooh. you know because he, he, he could sit on the, on the seat and he had to train and he had to com to 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 compete to 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 play you know because of his job nobody saw that right you know but People see, oh, he got millions, or he got a big house, or he got a whatever, and they're trying to do the shortcut to hit him somehow and to take money for him. Like, I, I think it's great that you're you're saying this because a lot of bullshit has been thrown his way, and yet none of these people have been there like you've been there. And the shit that people are saying, it sounds like there's some type of entrapment. It sounds like there's some, you know, are they trying to get money out of it? Is there a lawsuit behind it? Is there is there blackmail behind it? 
And here you are like, damn, dude, this fucked up, you know? I, I got mad love for this guy, and I know that these are lies, and and and, and what do you do? You know, what what, what do you do? I, I think the most you can do is what you're doing right now. You're just organically, honestly speaking, you were his fucking personal security for seven years. And and you yeah. in your opinion, in your what you've seen and what you've witnessed, all lies. Ain't Great guy. Is, is this some bullshit? It's uh all I can <clears throat> say, like, he doesn't deserve that. Right. At all. Right. At all. And um, you know, it 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 it's just like I I don't know if I could handle it. The way he is? The way he handled it. Yeah. If I was his position, mm -hmm. doing all the thing that he does in a good way, mm -hmm. and end up like with right. all those bullshit coming yeah. against him, I don't know, man. I don't know. Especially, especially towards the end of your career, it's like, damn, dude, are you kidding me? Yeah, and I you put know in what? all this work for all this time. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on the last couple of years, and and this is what you guys do to me, really? And you know what? You're talking about end of his career. I would say he's a little bit after half of his career. Because yeah, he still he, got much more. He can do so I know, much I know, I know. He I can know. do so much more. I know that. He's healthy. Yeah, I know. He's You're right. Training. He's training. How old, how old is Dwight right now? 38, my age. Okay. I'm two two months older than him. Okay. He can do so much more. Unfortunately, with all those, you know, bullshit going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. He could he could he, he, like, he could have done a lot more if that didn't come more, his way much right more, much right. more I see him training uh, I I saw him training when I start working for him for him and I see him training like two months ago what what if 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 somebody saw this podcast and they said you know what I I want that guy I want that guy as my as my uh, personal bodyguard because. I like that he kept it quiet. I like that this. I like that he lasted that long. I like that he does jujitsu. Da, 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 da. Would you entertain that with anybody else? Or you're just like, you know what? It's not about the money anymore. I got enough experience. I want to get back in this jujitsu world and open up my own gym. And that's what I'm focused on. Is that where you're at right now? I would say money talks. Even, <laughs> even when I was with him, that money talks. Mm. If he wasn't the way that he was with me, he respect me. You know all the good things that he did, right? Thing, I wouldn't take it. You know why? I have my law degree in Brazil. I have all my family in Brazil. I love US. Right. But I love Brazil too. Good. Yeah. That's you know? what's up. Right. And I don't need to go through right. some stuff. You know what I mean? Like yeah. somebody disrespect me yeah. or somebody treat me bad or, or, or racist or I, I don't need to go there. Right. I don't right. go I don't I don't need to go there. Thank God that I never went through that situation, you know, never got the respected. Mr. Howard treat me so well. So that's why I handled it all, you know, seven years with him. Right. I was married, I got divorced and I was with him and all that. You know what? Like if he wasn't that way. I couldn't handle it that much time. I would go back to Brazil right. ASAP, you know, because I have job there. I can be a fighter there. I can open a gym there. I can I can do a lot of stuff in, in, in Brazil, you know. So uh, 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 <coughs> if some job opportunity come up, of course I'm 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 down for it. But all depends, like how you know how things goes, you know, like if 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 it's a lot more than just the pay. There, there's a lot more things more. that have to be there. It's yeah. more. Right. It's more. It's way more, you know. So, um, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, that's understandable, of course. I mean, I had to ask because I'm sure that there's other people out there who would love somebody like you to be their personal, you know, security. When you have the jujitsu background, you're not just some gunslinging, you know, guy. You're not just some big ass, super intimidating person. Yeah. No, it's, it's different, you know. And yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of celebrities or, or, or um, People, people who are on that level, you know, with sports athletes, whoever it is, yeah. that would would love somebody like you. But <clears throat> it's a grind. It's difficult. You know, you told me details, it and it's fucking hard. You know, if you, it if it's hard to be like, all right, this guy's paying me whatever. Let's just throw that out there. Two hundred grand a year. 
But if, if I get a text saying, hey, we're going to the club in five minutes, you got to get up and get yeah. dressed and go to the club. Yeah. You know, or, or, hey, I'm getting up at five for a morning run. And you yeah. thought you had the day off. You got to get, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. There's a lot behind that. Yeah. And, and you got to be passionate about what you do in order yeah. to enjoy it. So um, you, need, you need to have that uh, that that good connection with the with the as well yeah, with the with, with the, the person, person yeah you know because if you don't have that feeling <clears throat> with that, that that connection you can't handle it of you course can't handle it right as much so you um, overlook things you overlook the frustrations if you got a good connection a yes, good bond with yes. this person otherwise it's like well why am I going through this shit yep. yeah yep. exactly so. Well, I mean, it was it was it was a great experience, and, and it's uh, it was. good that you and Dwight uh, had that friendship. And I hope you guys continue maintaining that friendship. I know that's a, that's a weird, difficult we travel thing. the world. Yeah, we travel the world. A lot of experiences there, bro. And, and I obviously wish him the best. I think this is just some For bullshit sure. that's about to blow over. It really, is, man. it'll blow over. But it's it's yeah. just the internet is fucking ruthless. Yeah, and the trolls and the nobodies and the idiots and the and the, and the the desperate people and 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 the the greed and, and everybody trying to come up, they're always going to shoot after anybody who's higher than them, and that's the that's Dwight true. Howard's and anybody else. So it, it, it's going to happen, but I think he'll be he'll be he'll be fine. Yeah, he'll, he'll yeah. yeah. And, you know, I'm, and I'm glad you spoke about it too. And, you, and you're you're not over here trying to defend him. You're just saying the truth. Like I never witnessed anything. That's a great guy, and I've had a fucking great career with him. I yep. just I'm just ready. I just going my other way because I want to continue going the jiu-jitsu route. Yeah, that, that's exactly what, what what happened. But um, uh, uh, most of the people who, like, you know, talking about it and all that, they, they don't have the that experience. Or right, they don't have right. That, they don't have the right to talk all that shit because they, they weren't there. Right. That's exactly it. Is. Yeah, and you were. And, and that's, hey, man, anybody who knows Dwight or you guys want to tag him, tag him. He should hear this, you know, because uh, here you are. Saying what is, saying what is, not about what's right, what's wrong. You're saying what is. You were, you were there. You witnessed this. You had this great experience with the white and it, and all the good things. And and that's it. That's what's important. All that other bullshit is just, it's what we call white noise. It's like it's like uh, the buzz in the air. You know, it's mm -hmm. just it's just bullshit. It really is. And and you guys be ready <clears throat> to have him on the court in the NBA or anywhere that he step in the court. The way that he trains. I the hope way, he gets another chance, dude. I bro, really do. The way that he dedicate himself, the way that he trains. Like I say, I started working for him when he was in Charlotte. He was training really hard. I left. He was training even harder. Whatever team that pick him, right. anywhere in the world, NBA or anywhere, he's going to do his job. He's going to give his 100%. You know, because that's why he's very competitive. He was training jujitsu with me, right? Self defense, and he was like giving his 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 best, you know. And I was like, "Oh my god, if I teach this guy, yeah, too much, too yeah. much, yeah, it's gonna be a trouble for me." Yeah, his long ass will be doing some rubber guard on you. <laughs> you know, he 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 could even like uh, there was like something going on about like uh, Jake Paul and fight him or something. Oh yeah, there was a debate there. Yeah, I didn't I, know that. I, I I would put I would bet on him. Really, I would bet because he can box. He can really box. He yeah. was learning, you know, yeah. jujitsu, and you know, some self defense. But boxing, he he can box. He got his long, long, arms, yeah, you know? yeah. And he he got a lot of uh, technique. So he definitely, if if when he retired as a basketball, he can he do can, that. He can do that as a little that, side thing. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So for what's sure. so what's how can people keep in contact with you now? Make on like you're, you're doing you you're teaching jujitsu at UFC gym again. Yes. Um, what evenings? What days? It's a uh, Monday to Friday, mm -hmm. six to seven thirty UFC gym in Kendall. In Kendall, that's the only thing that I'm doing right now. I just, uh, you know, came back to Miami. Right. You know, I have. A you literally party. just walked away from the whole the White Harbor thing. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So now, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, we end up very good, you know, terms. You know, I explained good. to him to everything going on, and he uh, <coughs> he knows like some stuff that going on in my life, my personal life. Mm -hmm. And he understood, you know, um, but uh, I I definitely need to be back on, on the mat. So I'm back on the mat. Excellent. So my students start, like, coming back, train with me. Uh, I'm ready to fight again. February. 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 And what, February. The, what, what, which tournament is that? What, uh, it's a Miami Open. Jiu Miami Open. Okay. BJJ. My boy is back. Yeah. And then Pan American <clears throat> uh, in March. 
So I'm gonna start rolling with you and just let yes. you beat me the fuck up as, as I shake off the, the the cobwebs. Um, but at least I can be a good body for you, you yes, know. Yeah, that's good. Cool. But 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 that's, that's cool. awesome. So and what about your Instagram? What what's your Instagram so people can tune in and follow you? Yeah, it's a uh, May Cumbaradas BJJ. M A Y K O N B A R R A D A S. Yes. BJJ. BJJ. No, yeah. no, anything in between. Just no, all that. I, no. Okay. May Cumbaradas BJJ. So you guys make sure you go give him a follow, um, and 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 let's see let's see this this reinvigorated journey back into the jujitsu world to walk away from you know such a pristine job as you know working with Dwight Howard and everything else. I know you got you have a, a new amazing woman in your life. You know, yes, shout sir. out to her. <laughs> uh, you, we, me, and you have talked a lot about her. So I hope when yeah. she's listening, she realizes that she will. I. I Heard nothing but great things about you, and 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 I can't wait to meet you as well. But my brother, I love you, man. I'm so glad that after too, such man. a long journey, I think we met in 2016, yes. if I'm not mistaken, yeah. and uh, you know, such a great bond, and, and we we kept in touch, and we've been real with each other, and and fast forward, here we are now, and and the journey continues, bro. Yes, I, I love you to death, I, and I love everything that we've done and the people that we've touched, and you have definitely have touched me in this jiu-jitsu world, and, and I, I need you to start kicking my ass again in the <laughs> jiu-jitsu world because I got to get back deeper into it. But thank you for coming to the podcast. Oh, thank you, thank you for blessing us, man. And uh, guys, make sure you show your love. Go follow him. Mekon Barradas, BJJ. Yes, sir. All together, no, no separation. He's going to be competing in February. I love you guys. Thank you for all the support. Can't wait till we do it again. Peace. Love you. Have a great fucking week, day, night, everything else in between. Take care. Take care, man.